Good morning, Adab. I welcome you all for the inauguration of Umar Khalidi Hall and the conference, conference on revisiting brand Hyderabad's cultural legacy. Jointly organized by HK Sherwani Center for Deccan Studies, Maulana Azad National Urdu University, and the US Consulate General Hyderabad. Welcome. Let us begin the program with the University Tarana. The University Tarana was written by lyricist Gulzar Saab, music composed by Vishal Bharadwaj, and sung by Sukhvinder Singh and Rekha Bharadwaj. session, Vice Chancellor Professor Sayyad Enul Hassan Sahab, Chief Guest, Honorable Council General of the U.S. Consulate Hyderabad, Ms. Jennifer Larson, Ms. Alia Khalidi, who is not with us today, but her in soul and spirit, she is very much around, and the daughter of late Dr. Mur Khalidi, Janab Meer Ayub Ali Khan Sahab, Senior Journalist, Registrar Sahab, Manu, and distinguished audience, Adab, and a very good morning to you all. 
This is the day that we have been waiting for very long. It has indeed been a daunting task to establish the Umar Khalidi Hall at the HK Sherwani Center for Deccan Studies, Maulana Azad National Urdu University. It took us a few years to accomplish this task. I must acknowledge the generous support of the US Consulate Hyderabad and all the friendly officials, especially Dave Moyer and Salim. came forward and showed so much of magnanimity and of course and Nigar Khalidi who stood firm in their belief that they would give us this collection despite so many passing years. Janab has been instrumental in making things move from end to end. There were a lot of loose ends to tie which would not have been possible. a host of logistical arrangements were required to make long time to the cause and had the will to make it happen. I also thank the vice president of Manu who helped immensely. The books are still in the process of being catalogued and some of them will be digitized as as soon as we are through with this process, it will be opened up for researchers. Actually, we were on a mission to get the Umar Khalidi book collection to Hyderabad. As it isn't just a mere book collection, this is one collection that many American universities Hyderabad seem to be the most appropriate thing. We also wanted to conference on Hyderabad as Dr. Umar Khalidi's memory couldn't be celebrated more appropriately than with an as that loved and wrote about immensely. 17th of June happens to be his birth anniversary, hence we thought that today is a date that's closer to his birthday and should be the right day to hold this event. We are honored to have with us today experts who know Hyderabad well. on the city. I now present a brief introduction of the chief guest today, Honorable Council General, Ms. Jennifer Larson. Ms. Jennifer Larson, Council General, U.S. Consulate Hyderabad, was previously director and acting DAS of the India, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, and Maldive affairs. She also served for four years as the Deputy Principal Officer in Mumbai. Prior to completing a year-long course at the National Defense University in June 2016, she was spokesperson at the Bureau of Near Eastern Affairs. Ms. Larson served as the Principal Officer in Benghazi, Libya, and then Acting Deputy Chief of Mission in Tripoli. She has also served in Pakistan, France, Sudan, Jerusalem, and Lebanon. Prior to joining the Foreign Service, Ms. Larson worked for NPR's San Francisco affiliate as a talk show producer. She completed her undergraduate and graduate work at the university. I welcome our chief guest, Excellency Ms. Jennifer Larson, Consulate General at Hyderabad, and all the dignitaries, especially uh, you know, associated with the Dakkan studies and have deep interest into the uh, cultural legacy on the behalf of the Honorable Vice Chancellor on 29th August 2022. 250 books which are deemed to be very rare are to be digitalized as mentioned in the agreement. Since Dr. Professor Umar Khalidi was a U.S. citizen and the U.S. Consulate Hyderabad had hosted his lectures in multiple Indian cities, the U.S. Consulate Hyderabad took up this project of shipment of books from the U.S. to Hyderabad. With this, a long-lasting association has been established between the U.S. Consulate 
and Maulana Azad National Urdu University. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I request our chief guest, Ms. Jennifer Larson, Council General, U.S. Consulate General, Hyderabad, to deliver her address. Good morning. Uh, I have here Apsa Kumera Adam. I'm actually trying to learn Urdu on by, on by myself. Um, I am an Arabic speaker. I studied Arabic literature for a very long time, and I did my master's. And so I know the script, but the language itself is quite different. So um, I leave here, be able to speak to you in Urdu. Uh, Vice Chancellor Hassan, Registrar Ahmed, Professor Faruqi, thank you for inviting me to be part of this historic event. Uh, this is my first visit to Manu, and I'm really happy to be here for such a historic occasion. Um, when we opened the consulate back in 2009, the one in Paiga Palace, Dr. Khaladi was one of the first American experts that we hosted as part of our visiting speakers program, and he had time for one lecture here in Hyderabad, and that was here at Manu. Um, I would not consider it a mere coincidence that after 14 years, the collection of books and papers that he painstakingly collected over decades has now come home here to his city of birth. Uh, the consulate and Dr. Khaladi also have another common connection, and that is our work with the Aga Khan Foundation, and I know some of you in this room are familiar with that. Uh, as mentioned by the registrar, Dr. Khaladi was the librarian for the Aga Khan program for Islamic architecture at MIT for more than 25 years, so more than half, more than a quarter of a century. During this period, he not only supported the documentation of architecture in the Islamic world, but he also documented the status of 2,000 mosques in the United States and Canada. And so perhaps we can one day organize a collection of, or the exhibition of this collection here at Manu. Um, over the past 10 years, the consulate here in Hyderabad has supported heritage and architectural preservation projects through the Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation. And in fact, when um, our new ambassador was here just a few weeks ago, we took him to one of those, which is the Paiga Tombs. Uh, the other, in both of these, are, are our partner is the Aga Khan Trust for Culture, is the Qutub Shahi Tombs. Cultural preservation projects like these allow the people of the United States to play a role in the nations and communities where we are so privileged to work and to live. Uh, by supporting the preservation of cultural heritage, we hope that we're demonstrating respect for the cultures and peoples that are now our, part of our new homes. I'm really glad this collection is here at the Center for Deccan Studies. Uh, when we started building our new consulate in Nanakram Gouda, and I think some of you will have seen it, uh, the first thing our architects noticed were the deck and rock foundations, uh, the formations, which are actually the foundation of the entire project. So they were determined to incorporate the rocks into the building design. And you'll see, if you've visited the consulate or seen any of the videos online, how the architects and engineers built our massive facility around the rock structures, uh, showing respect for the natural terrain of the Deccan, and also for those of us who have the privilege to work now in this amazing facility. We also have a, a nice walking trail that takes us through the rock formations and then some of the landscape of um, the uh, consulate, which is really a, just a wonderful thing to have. So it's an honor to recognize the contributions of Dr. Omar Khalidi and play a part in bringing this marvelous collection, which I just saw upstairs, to Hyderabad. Uh, his life and career were a bridge between India and the United States, and we appreciate his efforts to bring our two countries closer together, and hope that this book collection will be a reminder for others to do the same. So to end, I would like to thank again Vice Chancellor Hassan and his team, led by the indomitable Professor Farooqi, who has such passion for this project, and they're both Fulbright scholars, may I add, uh, in their efforts to bring the collection to Manu, the family of Dr. Khalidi for agreeing to send the books back to Hyderabad, and then well-wishers and contributors to this project, Dr. Nakadar in the US and Mr. Ayub Khan in Canada. So I look forward to coming back to more events and to hearing the rest of this morning's program. I thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Now we have an address, a recorded message sent by Ms. Alia Khalidi, the donor of the books. 
a brief introduction about Ms. Alia Khalidi. Ms. Alia Khalidi is the daughter of Omar and Nigar Khalidi. She has been a practicing attorney in the years for 12 years. She was president of National Association of Muslim Lawyers in 2019 and 2020. She is graduate of Wellesley College and Suffolk University Law School. Now we'll have a recorded address by Ms. Alia Khalidi. Assalamu alaikum. I want to thank the HK Sharwani Center for Decade Studies at Maulana Azad National Urdu University and the United States Consulate General in Hyderabad for the celebration of our collective work to inaugurate the Omar Khalidi Hall. In particular, I would like to thank the following people. Dr. Salma Farooqi for her work coordinating this project. Mir Ayub Ali Khan for suggesting Manu as our donee. Muhammad Ayub Ali Khan for helping us navigate the academic and preservation interests while also helping to coordinate all the logistics involved in an international donation and transfer. Salil Khadr from the United States Consulate and Dr. Nakadar from the American Federation for Muslims of Indian Origin for helping fund this project. And finally, my mother, Negar Sultana Khalidi, for her support for each of these steps and for helping me catalog over a thousand of the Urdu language books in the collection. Donating my father's book collection was a very personal project for me. I inherited my father's love of books. He worked very hard to maintain this collection by organizing the books he had and seeking out rare finds to add to the collection. We almost never passed a bookstore without going into it. Most people bring back suitcases full of gifts and clothes from India. In our case, we were often bringing back oversized and overweight suitcases full of books he painstakingly selected from bookstores in the old city. This collection also includes academic papers and theses that influenced his research and works on which he had a direct impact. He served as a mentor to several students, some of whom... Uh, and uh, Umar Khalidi, they were all classmates from sixth onwards in Alia School and Alia Junior College. So, Hamid sir, thank you for coming because you are the only one who knows him so closely. You know, talking about a friend who inspires you, who competes with you, you did is something very amazing and very difficult to talk about. I remember the crazy obsession Umar Khalidi had with the books. We used to walk on the streets of Abbots on Sundays and he used to look for the books which are available there, the old books. To reduce the price, he would not bend down. Just indicate what kitab kitne ki hai. And he bought so many books. He bought so many books. We were good friends, as I told you. We became friends because of Arshad, because of Gayur. And when Arshad went away to Saudi Arabia, he left Umar Khalidi, as we say in Hyderabad, Hamari Gaud me dal kar chale gaye Umar Khalidi ko. So now we took Umar Khalidi to show him Hyderabad again. Myself and Gayur. Gayur had some good connection with the commissioner of police at that time, Shafiullah Saab. We said, we went and requested the permission to visit Falaknuma Palace, which incidentally none of us had visited. Those were the times when Taj Falaknuma was not even a distant dream. And Umar Khalidi kept on asking, where has that item gone? Why this chair is not there? 
what happened to that item and i was wondering how he knew all those visiting that place for the first time we got time myself gayur and umar khalidi and we went to bidar he wanted to see the qila of bidar because he was deeply understand the kan by visiting the places by reading the books by writing about them and then umar khalid did disappear not disappeared in fact he went to jnu in jnu he was trying to do a course a short term course somehow the jnu did not suit him and he did not go along with the jnu so he came back and then went away to united states of america and we met him i met him when i went to saudi arabia in 1981 he had come there as librarian for king saud university library so there i used to go to him during the day time we used to sit down it is there he developed the idea of bringing out a book on hyderabad that was the first book hyderabad after the fall and he worked so hard on that he came one day to our place to arshad's place and presented his thesis what he wants to do and then he started working on that and you will be pleased to know i am very pleased that the rough copy or the first draft of that book is with me he had given it to me to read at at the time somewhere in 1981 82 83 Umar Khalid went away from Saudi Arabia and started working on his studies in the United States he went up to the level of phd but he did his phd from england not in the united states he had an obsession that i would do something different on hyderabad hyderabad was a sensitive subject there and hyderabad is also a sensitive subject now because of its previous monarchy but monarchy had changed democracy had came had come but umar khalid was focusing on what was the culture of hyderabad what has not been written about hyderabad and what could be written about hyderabad so he is the first one to bring about a book the hyderabad after the fall in which he talks about a lot of things about hyderabad what was the culture how lots of great people have written in that book now that book was published somewhere uh, in the mid 80s in 1992 we organized i was in saudi arabia and we along with my some very good close friends organized jashn e hyderabad that was 400 years of hyderabad we wanted to remember in jeddah in saudi arabia that was the first big event which had been organized or which was being organized eight day celebrations by a group of foreigners nobody dared to do that at that time but we did and we invited uh, the vice chancellor who had just moved out uh, ali ahmed khusro sahab and we had invited hasham ali akhtar we had invited uh, narendra luthar we had invited a huge number of people who represented the culture and the history of hyderabad it was a very successful uh, event where umar khalid for the first time presented his books and spoke about it in a formal function so that was in fact the real launch of that book on hyderabad that led the way he umar khalid had one obsession that he wants to do some unusual work on hyderabad and for that he needed support 
he needed financial support which he did not get which he was struggling to get there is a person from hyderabad faiz knows everybody knows sultan ghalib bhai sultan ghalib comes from a yemeni background and his complete name is sultan ghalib al ghaiti to sultan bhai helped him in printing that book for the first time sultan bhai was not happy with what he did because umar khalidi had an independent mind he wanted to do things in his own style and it was not a wailing of or the crying of a hyderabadi over the princely state of hyderabad it was the voice of a person who was looking ahead for the future of hyderabad and then umar became as as you know that he became famous he started traveling one incident which i remember which myself and uh, other friends have uh, did not like it he came here for the first time from united states after 911 as a representative of the american administration and wanted to dispel quote unquote dispel the notions which the indians or the muslims had developed about america we myself and gayur told him point blank that this is not your job and you are not an american citizen as yet so why are you doing this then he changed his style he left that place and then later on he joined aga khan trust where he made his name i am very pleased to share with you the information that he has written about 25 books some of them are excellent books and he had no hesitation in taking on the government no hesitation in saying what is what surprisingly his words started making noise and being listened by people who mattered when rajendra sachar justice rajendra sachar was preparing his first report on the situation of muslims in india umar khalidi found a connection went to sachar saab and he asked him one question he said sachar saab how many muslims are represented in the armed forces of india mr adwani the the question went to mr adwani because justice sachar had started making noise about it he wanted that information and which was not being doled out he said so adwani saab did not like it and he is told he took his name in the parliament and he said that this question should not have been asked but umar khalidi was umar khalidi you know one of the finest books he wrote was the khaki how the violence was perpetrated or continued by the indian forces during the communal riots but in a in an interview later on with rediff.com he has very clearly mentioned that he is not blaming the indian state as such he is talking about people who deviated from the path of secularism in india that interview if you could find you will find it very interesting because umar takes us on a tour of all these 75 years and tells us where we are standing i have been told by alia the daughter of uh, umar khalidi that he was when he left this uh, abort and he went on a you know permanently away from us he was working on two books hopefully i don't know the subject i don't know how to uh, uh, you know but i would like and most of us would like to help out in completing the book if that is possible umar khalidi has shown us the path that you have to love your country you have to be part of your system and do not hesitate in taking up your voice
raising questions may be uncomfortable but you should raise because unless we get the answers we get the right responses we will not be complete indian society will not be complete unless the voices of all the communities including muslims christians dalits are not heard or not told salma farooqi sahiba thank you so much for organizing such a great function and remembering umar khalidi and uh, i thank maulana azad national urdu university hamare vice chancellor sahab jinhone isme dilchaspi li ye pichle 7 saalon se is par kaam ho raha tha and we have succeeded now i am very happy thank you very much thank you sir for sharing your association with dr umar khalidi sahab now i request honorable vice chancellor manu professor sayed ainul hasan sahab to give his address dignity is on the dais and off the dais students friends ladies and gentlemen first of all i would like to welcome madam larson and i am sure that this is not her last visit it is the first visit to our campus so we will definitely we will have close ties with the american consulate in future also now as you know hyderabad hyderabad is a unique place because hyderabadis are unique and one was umar khalidi a versatile academician thinker historian scholar and he was picking up issues from all corners issues related to art and architecture history sociology status agrarian history economy rights status of women disparities gender bias exclusion inclusion and so many things you go and read his books you will find chapter after chapter so versatile author and very open mind so we remember today umar khalidi we are greatly indebted to his daughter that she took a special interest in bringing her valuable books to the hk sherwani center and i expect from all of you that please visit this center on frequent basis and see what treasure trove we have collected and his study will go further but yes there are certain individual interest also i do have i do have to identify myself not you how to identify i carry with me so many identities people call me banarsi then they say up wala i spent 42 years in jnu 5 years as a student 37 years as a teacher they say jnu it but yes now i'm in hyderabad there must be some identity i must carry forward how to acquaint myself with hyderabadis they are they consider me alien you can consider me alien but don't consider this university as an alien because this is this university is on your shoulders this is university this university has a special mandate of urdu now umar khalidi was somehow connected with i can see his collections also large number of urdu books he collected and he had direct access to the lisani art and with the urdu prose and poetry both so you have to acquaint yourself with the center you have to uplift the value of books 
and articles rendered by this great scholar. And you know, there is a pain also. Everybody wants to become friendly with me. Nobody looks deep down to my heart. What are the beats? And what is the number? So therefore, let us identify ourselves, our institution, our individuality, and then the collectivity. This will work together and pave way for our next generation. I am sure until now, the leader of the center is Professor Salma Ahmad Farooqi. And as long as she is the leader, the Deccani Studies Center shall remain in the safest hand. I wish to give a big hand to Professor Salma Ahmad Farooqi. Now, this is how you see, I am not in, from this field, but I wish I will provide all required support to the center. And I will see that the center becomes a stream of knowledge. So with your help, with your support, and our students, our staff, we would take this caravan to the ultimate height. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I invite my colleague, Dr. Shahid Jamal, to give a formal vote of thanks. Good morning, Adab, Salam to everyone. Uh, on behalf of the Center for Deccan Studies, uh, I would like to extend my thanks to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sayyid, Sayyid Anul Hassan Sahab, and Professor Ishtiaq Ahmad Sahab for extending all kinds of support uh, that we required for this program. And I would also like to extend my thanks to the media centers who came forward in supporting us to organize this program. At the end, I would like to extend my thanks to all the audience who took out their valuable times and participated in this pro program. Uh, before we disperse for a tea break, I, I would request you all to please stand up for the national anthem. हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे